Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is me, Muhammad Asif, and you are watching my YouTube channel, Asif Zeb Multi Videos. Dear viewers, today I am going to discuss that what is meant by agglutinin antibodies and what is meant by non-agglutinin antibodies. What is cold antibodies and what is warm antibodies, and why these antibodies are called cold and warm antibodies. And there are certain other terminologies on the basis of which we can classify these uh, antibodies from one another. So first of all, what is uh, agglutinin antibodies? Agglutinin antibodies are those antibodies which agglutinate red blood cells in a saline medium. It means that these antibodies are complete antibodies. That's why they agglutinate red blood cells in a saline medium. In this category. IgM is the most important antibodies which is known as agglutinin antibody. The structure of IgM antibody is pentameric in structure that's why it agglutinates red blood cells in a saline medium. While non-agglutinin antibodies are those antibodies which cannot agglutinate red blood cells in a saline medium. And in this category, IgG antibodies is the most important one. IgG antibodies cannot agglutinate red blood cells in a saline medium because of its monomeric structure. Because the structure of uh, IgG antibodies is such like that that it cannot cross link two RBCs at a time. While IgM antibodies is pentameric, that's why at a time it can uh, attach to five red blood cells and sometimes 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, these are we see, that's why it gives a visible agglutination action in saline medium. Another terminology which we use for these agglutinin and non-agglutinin antibodies is complete antibodies and incomplete antibodies. So we can say that complete antibodies are those antibodies which gives visible agglutination reaction in saline medium. That's why these are called complete antibodies. While incomplete antibodies are those which cannot give visible agglutination reaction in saline medium. That's why we call it as incomplete antibodies. Another important terminology which we use for antibodies is hemolysin antibody and non-hemolysin antibody. So in this category, hemolysin antibodies will be those antibodies which can hemolyze red blood cells, for example, IgM antibodies. IgM antibodies activate complement system in an effective way, or we can say that efficiently it activates the complement system, that's why red blood cells get hemolysis. Well, IgG antibodies are non-hemolysin antibodies because it cannot efficiently activate the complement system. Therefore, in saline medium, when we perform cross-match, sometimes the RBC gets hemolyzed and it is also incompatible reaction means the RBCs are completely hemolyzed due to IgM antibodies. So this is a sign of incompatibility of cross-match. Another terminology which we use for IgM and IgG antibodies that IgM antibody cannot cross placenta. Because IgM antibodies are pentameric antibodies, having high molecular weight. While IgG antibodies are monomeric antibodies, it have low molecular weight as compared to IgM antibodies. But the most important thing is that IgG antibodies have receptor on the surface of placenta. That's why it can cross placenta. This is the most important thing. Because of the presence of receptor for IgG antibodies as compared to IgM antibodies, which don't have any receptor to cross placenta. Another important thing is opsonization. And we can say that opsonin antibody. Opsonin antibodies basically help the macrophage to engulf microorganisms or red blood cells or platelets or any other thing which help the macrophage to engulf it. That's why we call it those antibodies as opsonin antibodies. For example, IgG antibodies. IgG antibody have receptor on the surface of macrophage. When it get attached to its antigen and the 
If C portion have receptor or macrophage, it get attached to it. Therefore, the macrophage then engulf it. So it helps in the process of phagocytosis. That's why we call it as opsonin antibodies. And this process is called opsonization. So in this category, IgG antibodies uh, are known as opsonin antibodies, where IgM antibodies are not opsonin antibodies. Now, the most important thing is that why IgG antibody is called warm antibodies and IgM antibody is called cold antibody. IgM antibody is called cold antibody because it gives best reaction below 37 degrees centigrade. But the optimal temperature for IgM antibody is 4 degrees centigrade. It means that at this temperature, it will give best reaction with its antigen. Well, IgG antibody is called warm antibody because it gives best reaction at 37 degrees centigrade, means body temperature. That's why we call it as warm antibody. So this was all about antibodies. There are certain terminologies. Hope so that you would like my video. Like if you like. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum.